In today's lesson, you and I are going to sit down and do a full IELTS listening test. I'll be doing the test with you, I'll be giving you some tips to improve, and I'll be telling you the answers. Welcome, my name is Eli and I run the website EnglishProTips.com where we help students get ready for the IELTS test. Now, in today's lesson, we're going to be doing a full IELTS listening test from Preptical and I'll be telling you about them later on. So, if you've got a pen and some paper ready, let's begin. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a conversation between a man and a woman as the woman checks into a hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. All right, so in part one, which is the easiest part, you're going to hear two people speaking, usually a man and a woman, and you'll need to complete a form. Now, what I'd recommend to you is look through the first questions and predict what kind of information you're going to hear. So let's do that together. So number one, We've got the guest's name and we've got Eva and then something else. So we're looking for a surname, a family name. Okay, so we're going to be listening out for when she says what her name is and she's most likely going to spell it as well. Number two, okay, we're looking for a postcode. So that's an area code. Now, area codes in the UK and US often have a series of letters and numbers. So we're looking out for when she gives her address and we're paying attention to the letters and numbers that she has. Number three is easy. We're going to be looking out for her mobile number. So be careful about those tricky numbers like 15 and 50. Number four, okay. We are looking for a checkout date and we've got the preposition on. So it could be something like on Monday or on, on Tuesday, but it could also be a date like on the 9th of September. Anyway, we know what we're going to be looking out for, either a day or a date. Finally, number five, payment method, bank transfer, problem with something payment. Okay, so we're looking for a collocation with payment, something like, online payment, mobile payment. Hmm, I can't think of any other examples. Okay, let's have a go. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Welcome to the Park Central Hotel. My name is David. Are you checking in? Yes, that's right. I've got a booking here. Great. Could you please tell me the reservation number? It's FH74. Just a moment, please. My apologies, ma'am. The reservation is confirmed, but your personal details are gone. Can I have your information on the file? No problem. Well, what's your full name, please? It's Eva Clark. How do you spell your surname? It's C L. A-R-K-E. Thank you very much, ma'am. And your postcode, please? It's S-W-A-6-3-2. OK, then. Could you please tell me your address? Of course. It's 40 Brick Lane. So that's in the borough of Tower Hamlets? Exactly. And is there a phone number where you can be contacted? Sure. It's 050346894274. Excellent. And when is your checkout date? Well, I'm going to stay here for four nights. Today's August 16th, so I will check out on August 20th. Now, just one more question. I'll need your payment information. Could you please tell me how you paid for the booking? Sure. I tried to pay online, but that didn't go through. 
so I had to pay by bank transfer. The reference number is 87942321. Thanks a lot. I apologize for the inconvenience. That's all right. All right, how did you get on? Let's go through the answers together. So number 1 was Clark. C L A R K E. Now, if you forgot the e or spelt it wrong, you don't get the point. Spelling is important in the IELTS listening test. Number two was the postcode SWA632. Now, I heard 6WA632, however, I almost put SW8632, and that's because I'm used to hearing postcodes that have letter, letter, number, so SW8. Don't let your knowledge of the real world confuse you. If you hear A, write A. Okay, number three is the telephone number 689427. Okay, you're often going to hear numbers in the IELTS listening test, so practice them. And be careful about some of the tricky numbers like 15 and 50, so they sound kind of similar. Also, in English, sometimes we say O oh, and sometimes we say zero. In the case of numbers, both O oh and zero mean zero. So, O oh, double one, for example, means zero one one. Oh, and that's another one. If you hear double one, so that means two times one, so one one. Or you might hear treble four, which means four four four. We don't usually say quadruple, so quadruple five, but that just means five, 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 five. Okay, so be careful about O and zero, and double and triple, or treble. Number four is August 20th. Now you can put this in a different format. You can say things like 20th August, or August 20, or 20 August. The important thing is you look at the instructions and it will tell you how many numbers and or uh, words you can put into the answers. And finally, number five was online, so online payment. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. All right, questions six to ten. So, in question 6 to 10, we have a new task. This is a sentence completion task, and here we have to choose a word or words or a number to make a grammatically correct sentence. Now, the first thing you should do is to look at the instructions. It says, write no more than two words and or a number. So, if you were to write three words in the space, you would get an incorrect answer. There are no more than two words. So, two words is okay, but no more than two words, and, or, a number. Okay, what I'd recommend to you is use the time before the listening starts to underline keywords and think about what the sentence um, needs to have to be grammatically correct. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Now, if it's possible, I need to get some information. Oh, certainly. Could you tell me if breakfast is included in the price of the room? And if so, when and where it is served? Of course. The breakfast buffet is included in your reservation. Hot breakfast is served from 6am until 10am. And cold snacks are available until midday. It is served in the main dining room, which is located on the first floor. You can take the elevator or the stairs to get there. That's great. So I'll have time to exercise before eating breakfast. By the way, is there a gym available here? Certainly. The hotel has a health club and a swimming pool. But if you like to use the pool and the steam room, you must have appropriate swimwear, which you can buy at the pool reception. And please don't forget to deposit all valuables in the pool lockers. I will definitely try the pool tonight. Oh, I completely forgot. Tonight, there's a football match on TV. Is it possible to watch it in the hotel? Well, our hotel is known for its unique sports lounge. 
However, I'm sorry to say that it's been reserved for a private party tonight, so maybe you can enjoy it on the other nights. No, the game is tonight. Can I watch it in my room? Sorry, the football channel is not available there, but I can suggest watching it on the televisions at the gym. The screens are quite large and the chairs are really comfortable. Thank you for the suggestion. I'm also planning to see some of the city's tourist attractions. This is my first time in the city, and I was wondering if I would need a tour guide. Well, there's a tour office nearby, and they can help you with whatever you'd like to know about the city attractions. When you leave the hotel, go straight and turn left at the corner. The tour office is in front of the Capital Bank. The city map they provide is not for free, but you can get a free one at the front desk. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Is there anything else I can help you with? One more thing, please. Can I have a wake-up call for tomorrow? Of course. What time would you like to have it? Well, I need to get ready two hours before a meeting, which is at 9am. So that would be great if I could get the call at 7am. This way I won't be in a hurry. Certainly, ma'am. One of our employees will give you a wake-up call. Thanks for being so helpful. All right, then let's go through the answers. Number six was first floor. If you put the main dining room or dining room, then you were wrong because we have on the, so we can't say on the dining room. The preposition on means we need to use a different word like floor. Okay, so remember these sentences do have to be grammatically correct. Number seven, all guests are required to have suitable swimwear. Okay, so swimwear is one word. If you wrote it as two words, you are wrong. Remember, spelling is important in the IELTS test. Number seven, Eva can watch the football game at the gym since the sports, okay, the answer was lounge. So the sports lounge is booked. So a lounge is basically a relaxing place, a public place, usually in a hotel. So the sports lounge is booked. Number nine, Eva should visit the front desk. So Eva should visit the front desk to get a free city map. I hope you didn't put tour office. It was very, it sounded like it was going to be tour office, but in the end, they said something about go to the front desk to get a free map. So the key word here is free. And finally, number 10, Eva needs to wake up at seven in the morning. So 7 a.m. in the morning or seven in the morning. And remember, you can put that as a number or you can spell it. So S-E-V-E-N. Okay, let's continue now and move on to part two of the listening test. Now turn to part two. Part two. You will hear a woman on a radio program giving some information about the reopening of a recreation centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. All right, then we're moving on to part two. And part two is slightly different to part one in that we're only listening to one person speaking. So it's a monologue. And what you'll find is that person tends to speak a little bit more quickly compared to the two people in part one. Now, In questions 11 to 15, we have multiple choice questions, which means we need to look at the question and see how many different options there are, usually three that we have to choose between. Again, I would recommend that you quickly look through the questions and the options if you have time and just underline these uh, key words that help you understand them before the listening starts. When the listening does start, then really focus in on the question you're trying to answer and don't get distracted. Remember, this question type gives you a lot more information and you need to constantly be looking at um, why it's one option or why it's not the other option. So make sure that you don't let your mind wander, which is very typical in multiple choice questions, and really make an effort to pay attention. Okay, let's try it. Now listen carefully to the radio programme and answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Christina Jones, 
And I'm here to inform you that Retford Recreation Centre will soon reopen its doors to the public after undergoing extensive refurbishment. So please follow me if you want to know what's new in the centre. As most of you dear listeners will remember, the centre has been closed for eight months to address several safety and security problems with the building that made it unsuitable for the general public and especially for children. Since the centre plays a vital role in the local community, it was decided that Retford residents deserve to have a recreation centre with a new modern look, improved safety features and updated facilities. The work began by installing fire detectors in every room and adding emergency exits to each floor. The next significant change that you will notice is that the cultural centre has been moved to the back of the building where there is more natural light. This was done to create a brighter, more vibrant area for cultural activities. The Town Council hopes that these refurbishments make the centre more attractive to the local community. As it was expected, the costs of the refurbishment were very high. The Council paid a fourth of the costs, but we owe a literacy organisation a huge debt of gratitude for supporting most of the expenses. We are also delighted to thank the generous people of Retford who contributed to the project with their donations. We expect the work to be completed by August 24th, so the centre will reopen on that day at 9.30am. The new operating times of the centre are Monday to Friday from 8.30am to 10pm and Sundays from 9am to 12pm. So it is closed on Sunday afternoons, all day Saturdays and also on public holidays. The centre's loan service is a new facility through which you can request any books, magazines, movies and audio-visual materials that are not currently available in the centre. We borrow the requested materials from other centres on your behalf and inform you by email or phone as soon as we receive them. We will deliver them to you through our complimentary delivery service within a week. Okay then, did you manage to stay focused or did you let your mind wander? If you managed to stay focused, then well done. So number 11 was A, um, because it had become dangerous. Number 12 was B, it didn't get enough sunlight. Number 13 was B. They said that the largest contributor was a literary organisation. So we needed to take the word organisation and instead put literary institute. So organisation and institute are synonyms. And we need to know that in order to get the question right. Um, Number 14, the answer was... um, Sunday morning. So they said from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Sundays. So that means in the morning. And then they also said how on Saturdays and public holidays the um, place is shut. Finally, for number 15, um, if you request a book from the centre's new loan service, um, the answer is B you'll be contacted when it arrives. So they mentioned how they'll contact you through email or by phone. Right, I hope you got those right. Let's move on to the next part. You now have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. All right, next we have some labelling questions. So we need to look at the map and choose which of these letters corresponds to which room. So what I'd recommend to you is look at the fixed objects on the map. So in this case, we can see the entrance down at the bottom and we can also see the locker room on the right. So just put a circle around these points on the map. This is going to help you to understand and to get the answers for some of the other questions. Now, there are some things that cause confusion when it comes to this question. Often, In the listening, they'll say something like, it used to be on the left, but now it's on the right. So you need to be very careful for when they describe where something used to be and where it is now. Or they might say, it's 
behind the reception area or to the left of the reception area. So you need to know the answer to one in order to get the next one correct. So pay attention and remember all of these will come in order. So we'll have the reception area first and then the community meeting room, the culture center, and then so on. Right, let's get into it. Now listen to the rest of the radio program and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, let me tell you more details about the center's new design. Where space was formerly crammed with small rooms, the center now has fewer rooms in an open plan layout to allow for various group activities. If you remember, the old reception area was located on the left, but now it can be seen right in front of you as you enter the center. The receptionists there will give visitors a brochure which shows all the new programs and activities that will be offered in the center. Among the changes are a new community meeting room on the ground floor that is located right behind the reception area and the conversion of some storage spaces into a workspace for the staff. Distinctive signage and floor directories now help visitors to easily find their ways. As I mentioned earlier, an important advantage of this renovation is that we have moved the culture centre to the back of the building, directly opposite the main entrance. This new area provides a relaxing space for both adults and children to enjoy cultural activities. On either side of this cultural centre are restrooms that are open to the general public. The children's area is now bigger and more colourful and provides enough space for several activities for children up to 10 years old. This area has been expanded by 40% to include an indoor playground, which can be seen right over in the far left-hand corner when you are standing at the reception. An assortment of playground equipment has been installed there with strict safety measures. The centre now offers over 10 public computers for adults to use for free, which are up against the wall just to the left of the main entrance door. The computers are available on a first-come, first-served basis during the centre's working hours. All computers have access to high-speed internet and some useful software is already installed on them. A selection of lockers can be found against the wall on the right. You can use them to store your belongings while you are inside the centre. The lockers are free of charge, but there are no locks on them, so you may want to bring a padlock yourself if you wish to use them. As a final point, Retford Recreation Centre now has a study zone, which is located next to the locker room on the same side of the building. This is to support a wide range of activities inside the centre, such as independent research, collaborative study, and also to provide a quiet place for those students who have said they can't study appropriately at their homes. This area is equipped with Wi-Fi, but a subscription is required if you plan on using the internet. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Right then, the answers. So the reception area was in position C. The community meeting room was in E. They said right behind the reception area. So you needed to get the reception area in C in order to know that the answer was E for the community meeting room. The culture center was in I. They said at the back opposite the main entrance. The indoor playground was F, so on the far left hand corner. And the student study zone was G, which was next to the locker room and on the same side of the building. So um, if you find this activity difficult, take some time to revise prepositions of place. So words like behind, in front of, next to, because that's basically what this activity is testing. It's your ability to understand prepositions of place. Right, let's continue with the test. Now turn to part three. Part three. You will hear a student and his teacher discussing a topic that the student has chosen for his presentation. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. 
Okay then, we're now in part three. And in part three, typically you hear a recording of multiple people in an educational context. And um, you'll find that it's quite a bit more difficult than part two. So in this question, we have to um, complete somebody's notes. And one idea for note completion is to think about what kind of words fit in the space. So if we look at number 21, it says a combination of chemicals was used to remove the something to light. So we're looking for a noun that's going to fit into this space. So um, was used to remove the exposure to light or well, that's all I can think of really. So we're looking for a noun that's going to fit into this space. What about in 22? Hill claimed his photographs were something colored. So we're going to look for an adverb that fits into this space, something like um, brightly colored. What about number 23? Hill was accused of being a something since he didn't make the details public. Okay, so we're looking at looking for a noun that's going to fit into this space. So something like accused of being a copycat or a thief or a crook, maybe um, something negative, but um, basically we're just looking for a noun here. 24, after 156 years, it was finally proved that Hill was a something. Okay, so again, we're looking for a noun like crook or phony or um, thief. And 25, research shows that some of Hill's pictures were something with fake colors. So we're looking for a verb here because we've got were something with fake colors. So we're looking for a past participle verb. So were infused with fake colors or were made with fake colors. Okay, right, let's have a go. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hello, Brian. Come in and take a seat. Good morning, Dr. Benson. I appreciate your time. What we are going to discuss today is the topic that you have chosen for your presentation. Exactly. First of all, please clarify the reasons that you selected Hill's contribution to the development of colour photography as the subject of your presentation. Well, ever since I was young, I was fascinated by photography. While we were discussing the chapter in the class, I found Levy Hill's invention of colour photography process quite interesting. Do you think Hill's invention is an adaptation of what Daguerre invented earlier in France? Well, the daguerreotype was the first commercially successful photographic process in the early 1840s, named after the inventor Daguerre. Each daguerreotype is a unique image on a silvered copper plate. Daguerre exposed the plate to light and fumed it with mercury vapour. The sensitivity to light was removed with a mixture of chemicals, and the result of this process was black and white photographs. Later, in 1851, Hill worked out his own very different version of the process. Therefore, we can't find remarkable similarities between these two inventions, right? Not particularly. They are usually compared because Hill eventually changes the name of his process from heliochromy to hillotypes, by analogy to the daguerreotype process, stemmed from Daguerre's name. What is the characteristic feature of hillotype? Well, as I said... Levi Hill claimed to have found a way to create naturally coloured photographs, which he called hillotype. What do you mean by claimed? Was it not true? Well, it has remained a mystery for many years. When he refused to release the details of his process until a patent was filed, professional photographers denounced him as a fraud. In 156 years, no definitive evidence was presented to suggest that Hill's invention was or was not innovative. Later, the examination of 62 hillotypes using advanced technologies revealed that he was indeed a genius. Hill died in 1865 at the age of 48, possibly a victim of his long and incautious exposure to the poisonous chemicals involved in his experiments. Are there any other conflicting findings in these researches? 
Well, although he discovered a method to create natural colours in photographs, the research results suggest that Hill enhanced some of the pictures by adding fake colours to the plates manually so that they looked more multi-hued than they actually were. All right then, let's look at the answers. So 21 was sensitivity, and you need to get the right spelling. Sensitivity. Number 22 was naturally. Number 23 was fraud. Okay, so if someone is a fraud, it means that they are like an imposter or they make up their results. They're not genuine, they're a fraud. However, it was found out that he was a genius. So someone very smart. And again, the spelling matters. So if you got genius, but you spelled it incorrectly, you don't get the point. And finally, number 25 was enhanced. Okay, definitely getting a bit more tricky now. Let's move on to the next part. You now have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. All right then, so now you've got another sentence completion task. So look at the instructions to find out how many words you have to write. And remember, you have to write grammatically correct sentences. So if you want, pause the video and try and go through these questions by yourself. When you're ready, hit play and begin the recording. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 26 to 30. Do you have any particular views on the presentation, Dr. Benson? I believe that you were great. It was clear and concise, and you conveyed the most important points without overwhelming your audience with irrelevant details. However, you can consider some tips to improve your next performance. Avoid putting paragraphs and long sentences on your slides. Limit the slides to five lines of text and use only words and phrases to make your key points. This way, the audience will be able to digest and retain the main ideas more easily. Don't limit your presentation to what's included in your slides, and try to paraphrase key points in a narrative. Excellent points. Thanks a lot. I'm quite sure you exactly know that conducting historical research is a key step in gathering accurate information and authentic statistics. Definitely. The guidelines were clear in this regard. However, I noticed that you only partially mentioned the sources of your study. This is not a professional approach to include citations. You are right. I would appreciate if you could help me. You can cite your references within your presentation slides, using the same format as in-text citations. Another possibility for citing sources is to create a separate slide. Remember to cite sources for direct quotations, paraphrased materials, and sources of facts. If you use images such as photographs on your slides, you should also credit the source of the image. Don't forget that creating a references handout is also recommended. Great, I will definitely do that. Dr. Benson, did you grade my presentation? Absolutely, I did. The grades will be available within five days of the due date for the assignment. This time, you will be able to see the grades on the department's notice board before they are uploaded to your online portal. So when will be the due date? It will be on the 15th of September. Therefore, the grades will be available by the 20th of September. Thank you so much, Dr. Benson. You're welcome, Brian. That is the end of part three. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. OK, let's go through the answers together. So 26 was audience. Audience. 27 was digest. So to digest and remember the main points. Digest. 28 was statistics. Statistics. OK, 29 was sources. Sources. And you need to have correct spelling. Uh, number 30 was notice board, which is one word. Notice board. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now turn to part four. Part four. 
you will hear part of a lecture on the use of the global positioning system in today's agricultural industry. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Did you hear that? This time we're answering questions 31 to 40. So, just because we were answering questions in groups of five before, doesn't mean it'll be this way throughout the whole test. You need to listen to the instructions. Okay, so part four is the most difficult part of the listening test. And in this part four, we've got two activities. We've got a sentence completion and a diagram completion task. Okay, remember you can pause this video, look through all the questions, and then when you're ready, hit play and have a go. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this lecture on agriculture. My name is John Miller. And I'm delighted to be here today to talk about the significant role of the global positioning system in precision agriculture. Integrating the global positioning system, known as GPS, and geographic information systems, known as GIS, has made it possible to develop and implement precise agriculture or site specific farming. These technologies have allowed real time data to be combined with precise location information and have contributed to the successful aggregation and analysis of large amounts of geospatial data. GPS-based applications in precision agriculture are employed for farm planning, field mapping, soil sampling, tractor guidance, crop scouting, and yield mapping. During dust, rain, fog, darkness, or other low visibility conditions, GPS plays an essential role in helping farmers to work more efficiently. It was hard for farmers in the past to determine the effects of production techniques and features of the land on agricultural productivity. This hindered their ability to harness the most effective strategies for the treatment of soil or plants that could have increased their production rate. But now, precision agriculture allows more precise dosing of pesticides, herbicides and chemical fertilisers as well as more efficient dispersion of these substances on the land. This contributes to higher yields, lower expenditures, and a more environmentally friendly farm. Precision agriculture is rapidly growing in popularity, mainly due to the introduction of more precise, cost-effective, and user-friendly equipment into the agricultural industry. Many of the breakthroughs in this field are results of incorporation of onboard processes, data collection sensors, and real time monitoring systems. Many assume that the potential benefits of precision agriculture can be achieved only on large farmlands and requires considerable capital investment and IT knowledge. This is not the case. There are inexpensive, convenient, and easy to operate tools and equipment that can be put to use by all farmers. I would like to introduce three applications that are bringing low cost precision agriculture to farms of any size. The first case is a smartphone app, which is still under development. This app gives total acreage, divides up land by crop type, and gives advice about the optimal amount of inputs to use, such as seeds and fertilizers. This means that farmers are not using more products than the soil can handle. This technology is at a stage now where it is easy to prototype and will be available to the public in two years. The second tool is a moisture sensor that gives farmers real time feedback and allows them to adjust their irrigation schedule manually. This solar-powered sensor can help farmers to analyse farmland more accurately, assessing soil type, drainage rate and weather patterns. The third equipment is a GPS-based weed management system. A simple greenness sensor looks for plants, and when a plant is detected, its coordinates will be compared with the coordinates of plant on the plant map. If there is no corresponding plant on the plant map, then it can be assumed to be a weed, and the system applies an appropriate herbicide to kill it. Besides these low-cost solutions, 
many farmers employ more advanced GPS-based technologies to focus on boosting their agricultural production. These GPS receivers obtain position information for mapping field borders, routes, irrigation systems, and trouble spots, including pests or disease in crops. Many of these applications need on-the-go adjustments, so very high GPS accuracy is required. A straightforward manner of accomplishing this in a farm is to use two GPS receivers that track same satellites so that higher accuracy can be obtained in real time. One of the receivers is a fixed base station, which is located on the farm, and the other one is a rover station that can be installed on a tractor. Since the position of the base station is known accurately, the error in estimating the location of the base station using satellite signals can be determined. This differential location can be communicated to the field GPS receiver in the rover by a radio link, and this information can be used to increase its accuracy. To sum up, precision agriculture holds the promise in boosting yields and saving money. The use of imagery and sensors, robots, drones, automation, digitalization, and software technologies are opening a new chapter in agriculture. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Yes, part four was certainly the most difficult. So let's have a look at the answers. 31 is real time, so real hyphen time. Remember, words with a hyphen are counted as one word in the IELTS exam. So real time, real hyphen time. 32 was visibility, visibility. 33 is yields, yields. 34, breakthroughs, breakthroughs. So remember, breakthrough is one word. 35 is development, development. 36 is two years. Remember, we're allowed one word and or a number. So two years is one number and a word. 37 is solar, so solar energy. 38 is coordinates. 39 is base station. Now I put capital letters for the B and the S, but that's not essential. I just did that because I saw that Rover Station had a capital R and a capital S, but you don't need to put the capital letters here. And finally, 40 was radio link. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this um, listening test. And like I mentioned, this is from um, a website from, called Preptical, which do IELTS mock tests. So if you want more help identifying what level you have in your IELTS, then have a look at Preptical and try one of their mock tests. I highly recommend them. Okay, best of luck with all of your studies and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye then.